If you would have told me that I would at some point invest my time into another Rust game, I would probably call you crazy. In fact, I bet all I had to do was save Rust and that was probably enough of justification for you to slowly turn your back already. But since most of the time early access titles require patience and most importantly a bigger picture, I suppose there is a lot more to this survival game than just a Rust comparison. Let's jump straight to the chase and address the biggest elephant in the room. At the end of the day, this is a survival game. Whether you're looking for PvP or PvE experience, survival is ultimately your main priority. You play as a cyber-like individual who's also a prisoner, and your main task is to prevent Earth from extinction. That also appears to be your punishment, I suppose. Whether you join someone else's group or go against them, your main goal is to keep Earth from dying, which means there is a timer, which can be adjusted in your settings, but that's only if you're an admin, of course. The bottom line is, if Mother Nature dies, you're just as good as dust. Now, everything I just said to you is a broad picture, but the game truly starts to shine right when the timer starts ticking, and that's also when the game drastically separates itself from its competition. You start off in a weaker area by collecting resources and getting to know your surroundings. The main currency in the game, which also appears to be your main energy source, is called Terracide. Terracide is eventually an energy source that was discovered by humanity, and over the course of some time it was abused and led to a huge disaster, forcing the remaining humanity to leave the planet. All of the remaining survivors relocated to space, starting a new life, shortly after people realized that there is no stable energy flow in space, which means that some of them have to go back down to Earth and collect that so-called terracite. Obviously, the mission sounded very dangerous, therefore most people refused to volunteer. And this is when everyone agreed to send down prisoners back to Earth, and as a reward they were offered their freedom back. And this is where your journey begins as a player. At that point, you have two choices. You can choose to supply space with terracite and save the planet, which potentially wins your freedom back, or you can just completely go against that and essentially end the remaining human life by letting Earth run its course and die out. And this is when this era stands out from even Rust itself, let me explain. If you ever played Rust, you might already know that in Rust you're sort of on your own. It doesn't matter whether you're by yourself or you have a teammate with you, you're essentially defending your base from other players. And that's about it. But in this era, you have a purpose. You may encounter some other players at some point throughout your gameplay. And each and every single player you encounter has a specific role in the game, or which appears to be a server. Do you see where I'm going with this? Which means that every player you encounter could either play as a huge benefit or your worst mistake. You see, in this era, you don't want to go just gun blazing all the time. You need to figure out what that other player is doing, find out their true intention. If you decided to save the planet and that other player has the exact same purpose, why would you want to kill him? Or both of you could just team up and help one another and seek those who try to go against you or vice versa. Every single player has a role to play, makes every individual feel valued. Now the game shares quite a few similarities with Rust. The base building is very simple and easy to get a hang of. Now unlike Rust, ammo is fairly easy to craft. It doesn't require much time, and it's simply because the player is not your main threat. There's also AIs out there that spawn and carry loot around them. Now explosives and other advanced resources do take time, which means if you encounter other players' base, it'll take you a whole lot more than just assault rifle ammunition in order to raid them. Now, whether you're looking to play multiplayer or single player, your character never leaves the server, in which case, if you do play multiplayer, hiding your base is a smart move. Because if anyone gets to your base, they technically have access to your character as well. Now, one of the very cool features in this game is the lock system, in my personal opinion. And here's what I mean by it. When you team up with another player, for instance, and you make a chest, that particular chest will lock everything that goes in and out. It makes it very easy to keep track of items. Meaning, if I decided to deposit 400 metal scrap and another player decides to take it without telling me, all I have to do is look at the history in that chest and I'll know exactly what happened to my 400 metal scrap. That way if your teammate decides to lie about it, it wouldn't work because I'll know exactly what happened to it. And every individual chest has its own little list, and that is by far my favorite feature in this game. It's simply something I've never seen before, especially in a game like this, and for this type of game, I think it's very convenient. Distera has a good foundation to excel in. Everything from a level design to even a convincing voiceover at the start of the game, it's great. There is even a story that's built in into the game. But there is also quite a few negatives that we need to talk about. Now, despite that this is an early access title, some of these negatives are no excuse as to why a game should perform the way it does. But nonetheless, the very noticeable issue, in my opinion, is its optimization. The game is poorly optimized. 
Now, I have a very beefy computer that can clearly handle a lot of things, as far as everything that I do with it. And yet, when I start this game, even the cutscene itself lags, as if I play on something that was built in early 2000s. At first it freaked me out, but then I start watching other review videos, and apparently it's a very common issue with this game. If you played this game on epic settings, you will experience a lot of puppins. So in order to avoid those issues, I had to change my settings completely. Now, for a game like this, you probably want to use high frame rate regardless, especially if you want to use that to your advantage. But still, players that want to enjoy a pretty looking game, they should be able to have an option to where they can just increase their settings completely on high quality graphics. There should be no reason for a cutscene to freeze at all. AI in the game feels lifeless. They never take cover, they always run in a straight line, and it's either towards you or away from you. In certain areas, you might still experience a drastic frame drop. Now, something worth mentioning, and I never noticed this in single player, but apparently this is a huge issue with this game, which also makes me think that this is a multiplayer thing, but it's hunger depletion when you're out of the game. Those who leave the game and return the next day, they always return to a dead body. And it's not because they were eliminated by another player, it's simply because their hunger bar never stop depleting. And this is something that needs to be addressed, because clearly it's an error in the system that requires some tweaking. It's one thing when players remain on the server, likewise in Rust, but there should be no reason for your hunger to go down while you're not in the game, or in this case, the server. If you're currently thinking about getting this game solely for a multiplayer, just know that the development team is currently working on fixing the issue with hackers. Apparently right when the game was released, they've been having a really hard time dealing with people using cheats. And this is something they're still trying to take care of as we speak. So I would personally suggest that you just stay away from this multiplayer concept completely until they fix it, unless of course you're willing to deal with stuff like this. I know that I personally have no patience for this, and that's why I just never even tried. Everything I mentioned in this video about this, just take it with a grain of salt. The game is not even a week old on Steam. There is so much more that needs to happen with this title before they peacefully bring more content. My number one concern right now is definitely its stability and performance. Just like I mentioned earlier, everything else seems to be in the box. The foundation is here. They have a vision as far as where they want to go with this game. It's just a matter of making this title look pretty, if you will. If this video helped you, be sure to hit a like button in order to help somebody else. Let me know what you personally think about this game. Are you thinking about getting it? Are you interested in the multiplayer? Are you excited about the single player in this game? If you enjoyed this type of content, make sure you hit a subscribe button. And as always, this was your boy Roos, and I'm out. Bye.